Hello everyone, my name is Dikas Nera and in today's video we will learn how to install Ubuntu Desktop on a VPS, which is the desktop version of Ubuntu. You will install it on a VPS and it will look something like this, Ubuntu Desktop. You might have used Ubuntu for your own work, like installing some software, but what were those files? There was no visible system that I could find. It looks like Windows, but this time we will install Ubuntu Desktop on Ubuntu's own VPS. Then such a system will be visible and you will connect to it with your RDP or remote desktop connection, just like you do with Windows. We connect to RDP, and in the same way, we will connect to our Ubuntu RDP, ok? First of all, you should consider your requirements here. If you need a VPS, you can take one with 2GB RAM or 1GB RAM. The more RAM you have, the better it will perform. Ok, and here, this popular VPS provider is available, you can use it. Now, I will create a draw area. First of all, you have to click on the droplet and select the version of Ubuntu from here. After that, I select this one from here. Ok, because after showing this, I have to use it daily, so I will select this one. There are 16 gigabytes, I will choose that, ok. After that, you can select any data center, and then I type my password here. After typing the password, I will write yes Ubuntu RDP. And I will click on create droplet and click ok. So look, it's a simple process here. You just have to run a few commands, I mean almost 6 to 7 commands, after that your Ubuntu will be installed and you will see something like. If you want to run software, then create a droplet like this, install Ubuntu on it, and then stop. Whatever software you have, put it in running mode and leave it running. It will remain running for 24 hours, and after your work is completed, simply delete the droplet. This is what people do, and you can also install the same Windows RDP, but this time I'm showing you Ubuntu, ok. So here you have got that IP, open PuTTY. Enter the IP in PuTTY and click on it, login is root, click on it, enter my password, ok. After entering the password, we are logged in. Simply, you don't have to do anything else. First of all, add a user because. This is what you have to do. I will create a user here by the name because. Ok, this user has been created. Here it's asking for the password, ok. I will enter the password here. Ok, and it's asking for the full name. Let me simply enter this. It's asking if it's correct, so type Y and hit enter, OK. After that, let's update some packages here, so that there are no problems later. Let's update these packages, OK, yes. So now it's done, and after that you have to run a simple command. OK, let me copy this, paste it here, yes, and after that this one. Now I will maximize it a bit by running this command. You don't have to install sudo because you're already logged in as root. If you're not in root, then you have to install sudo. So only. You have to type this task cell command and press enter. Ok, it's asking. You have to install this by going back. Wait. Type Y and in this one also do not use sudo because sudo is used when you're not in root. So you simply have to run this command only, ok. After this, I go to task cell, copy it, paste it here and click. After this, 
you will get a lot of options here. As I tell you, like Ubuntu Live CD, Ubuntu, there are many of them. You have to go down here and look for Ubuntu Desktop. After finding it, you have to press the spacebar to select it. If you press space, it will get selected. After that, press the tab button. And then press enter, OK. Now it will get installed. It will take some time, look here. After this, there's only something from 0 to 100%. It will run once, as soon as it completes. Here it is, OK. It's doing the installation right now, so as soon as it completes, I will continue again in I. If you have taken 1 gigabyte or 2 gigabytes RAM, then it will happen quickly. If you have taken more RAM, then it will take some time. So after that, we'll continue once it's in set of installation. You simply have to run this command. Once you have completed it, after that you have to run this command by copying here or you can paste it. OK. After that, simply you have to run this command. Copy. It's necessary to install the RDP that you will connect to. So I do this, copy, paste it here and it's getting installed now. Type Y and click Enter. After that, the second command is to enable it. Enter this and this is also done. After that, there are some things like the icons etc. in Ubuntu that are a little different. So to make it look more like Windows, you can run this command. It's not necessary, it's optional. So if you want those kinds of icons, then you can run this command. So I will proceed, copy. Paste here and type Y, click Enter, OK. And after all this is done, if I reboot it once, then you can use sudo reboot or only reboot. The system will reboot, OK. So look, now it has rebooted. I think you will see it again in 10 to 20 seconds. It will be done because if I take it here, it will not take that much time. And before that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel related to cloud computing on Ubuntu and CentOS. I have shown you how to install different mail servers and websites etc. And whatever other things are there, whatever commands etc. You can find them here on my website. You will find it here. When you go to the BPS categories, then you will find all the things here like. I covered that completely and how you can do refresh etc. Whatever mail server etc. I have done, all those things are here so please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So now let's connect through RDP. Here I will copy the IP, enter the IP here and click on connect, type yes here. And after that, people will ask about Ubuntu. On this, my username was Vikas, which I had added as a user. User Vikas was that one. And here I will type the password. After typing your password, click enter. OK, after this you are logged into your account, and you don't need to do this here, you can also cancel it. Only after that I click on next here, next next and skip this and start using Ubuntu. So after doing this, the Ubuntu dashboard has come here and now. Whatever you need, be it Firefox, Mozilla, etc., if you click on activities, it will appear to you. OK, look, this is Thunderbird, the mail client, with an Outlook-like interface. What is the name of this? It's an alternative to Outlook. Thunderbird. Now I will open Firefox and see what the speed is like. In the speed test, we check the internet speed to see what speed we are getting in Ubuntu on DigitalOcean server.
So I have come here. Okay, ask me later, because it has just started. So it will run a little slow at first. Then it will become fast automatically. Okay. So I am here at speed test. I'll go to test. Type, click enter. Then click on speed test here. Okay. And after coming here, I click in below here it. The center also shows whose server it is, whether it's digital oceans or whose it is. Look here, research and education network. This is the download speed here which is 1 gigabit per second, which means 1605 Mbps, look, 1600. I am getting download speed, upload speed is also coming here between 12 and 1300 Mbps, so the speed here is very good. This is how DigitalOcean's BPS performs. So whatever other things you can do here, whatever software Ubuntu supports, you can run it here. You can do browsing, whatever you want to do here. That's all for this video. Let's install something else in the next video, like something different, something like Kali Linux. So we will try to install it. This is all for this video, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks and keep watching.